This is the home of Mr. A. Clapham of Whangarei, a man with a novel hobby. Even his house shows signs of novelty. But it's not the chimney pot decoration that brings young visitors around. There's something more interesting inside. For 35 years, Mr. Clapham, a retired engineer who has traveled the world, has been collecting clocks, clocks of every size and shape, clocks from every country he's visited. Some of his novelty clocks are a source of delight and wonder to youngsters. This monastery clock is 150 years old. At the hour for prayers, the figure of a monk tolls the bell. Here's a 24-hour clock. And here's a clock that goes backwards. But pride of his collection is this French alarm clock which is 260 years old. A musical box keeps the youngsters happy while Mr. Clapham gets on with his job of repairing another specimen for his unusual collection. Big crowds always gather at Naro Wahia when the local Maori people hold their annual regatta. This 50-year-old event offers something different in entertainment and attracts one and all from far and wide. On the banks is all the fun of the fair, a pleasant diversion till the regatta starts. Some people prefer watermelon eating. The great attractions are the canoe races. In olden times, this river was an important highway, and for one day of the year, the war canoes again speed over the waters of the Waikato. Paddles fly as the crews revive the skill of their forefathers. When it comes to dancing, the women folk dress up and show their traditional skill. And that includes the comedy turn by the fat lady. The most popular entertainment of the day are the canoe hurdle races. In this novel event, the women are as clever as the men. And there's quite a knack in putting a canoe over a hurdle. Yes, quite a knack. There's also the diving under method for men only. The water jump at the Grand National has nothing like this. The race goes not to the swift, but to the ones who can remount without capsizing or losing their paddles. There are spills and chills by the dozen on regatta day, and the last race is a good finish to a good day's outing. Yes, he's lost his paddle, but he's out to win. This is a rare occurrence. Mount Ruapehu, one of New Zealand's few active volcanoes, is in eruption. On the left is the mountain's main peak, over 9,000 feet high, the highest point in the North Island. In the center is the crater with volcanic ash pouring out of it. Down below, the ash browns out the landscape, leaving a gritty deposit everywhere. As the wind changes, another part of the mountainside gets an ash shower and living conditions at the tourist hotel become, for the time being, a little unpleasant. The ash has not yet reached the skiing slopes, and skiers divide their time between volcano watching and sport. Amongst the skiers, government scientists take magnetic measurements, which may indicate molten rock below. In the meantime, those people who have come up for their holidays get in all the runs they can while the going's good.
big explosions like this have been going up twice a day or more. From down towards National Park Railway Station, where the crater stands some 6,000 feet above eye level, the cauliflower clouds are seen to balloon up for at least another 6,000 feet. Geologists are getting samples of thrown out lava from the ash-covered glacier on the very edge of the crater. Cauliflower production is in full swing, the big ones filled with the crackle of many small lightning flashes. was another 6,000 footer and it's still rising. Hot samples have fallen on the blackened glacier and melted their way in. Luckily no one was standing here at the right moment to collect this one. From a ridge above the crater there's a fine view all round. 90 miles to westward Mount Egmont, an extinct volcano, thrusts its cone through the layer of clouds. Mount Narahoy, another volcano at present dormant, is seen to the north. From the ridge there is also a fine view into the crater. All the time vents are pouring out steam and ash clouds of various colours, while every few minutes a minor explosion sends up lumps of solidified lava, most of which fall back. To make up for their lost sport, ski club members enjoy unusual lunchtime entertainment. For a volcano that had shown no signs of activity for four or five hundred years, and was thought to be almost extinct, Ruapehu is turning on a remarkably good show. During eruptions, the lake that normally fills the crater is displaced by a solidified circular crust of lava, about 200 yards across. From the vents, the ash and steam pour out continuously, pass over the lip of the crater and out over the surrounding countryside. So Ruapehu rumbles on, a joy to geologists, but a nuisance to everybody else. <laughs>